My guest today is Michael Schroeder. Michael, how are you? I'm doing well, Dave. How are you? I'm doing really well. It's good to see your face again. We were uh, we were once on the same team. Yeah, before the, that, so that point, I, I didn't have a beard, and this before COVID, so <laughs> we both. Uh, I didn't used to be this handsome. So we both <laughs> <changed> a lot. <laughs> uh, and um, I, I want to talk to you about uh, this this thing that you're doing. I know you and I both work for Microsoft. There's a thing that's sort of separate from Microsoft, or maybe it's it's t- not entirely. But you're doing some um, some career coaching, right? Yeah, yeah. Tell me a little about that. So a couple of years ago, I started, you know, independently or actually through, through some things at Microsoft, um, through programs to, to do some mentoring and coaching. And I really liked it. And actually, I was helping people out. And so I did this very much informally. And uh, the the angle that I looked at was very mirroring my, my own career path of starting off educated as an architect, but then making a career in software. So my my angle really is helping people combine their their love of technology with a creative spirit. And so there is no defined path for that. There is, you know, the idea of, of a person who is creative and who's doing technology, it can go in so many different ways. It can be in music, it can be in art, it can be in design, it can be in the way that you perform your work any day. So I found that for me, my sweet spot was when I combined my creativity with technology and do it in ways that, you know, it could be creating a tool for myself or creating a way to share my work or creating, uh, finding a way to uh, to do something creative that is enabled by technology. So these are always been the, the what I've been fascinated with uh, throughout my career, actually almost throughout my whole life. So um, within that world, I found that the approach that I had to building a career for myself um, resonated with other people. So uh, I started a, uh, a I, I've started doing this informally, whether it's, you know, putting up on my LinkedIn profile that I'm a coach and mentor, reaching out to, uh, to other groups within Microsoft that uh, are in need of mentors and coaching. So doing that, you know, in part of my work, but also, you know, putting myself out there. So, you know, earlier this year, I put up a, a website called techcreativecoaching.com. And that is a, sort of a place where people have been reaching out to me. And at this point, I'm looking, I'm exploring this as 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 a possibility for me in the future, um, but while still working at, working at Microsoft. And the reality is that, you know, in the pandemic, I've been able to do a lot of this from right here, from my home office setup, India. and uh, and help out people in India, help people in Ireland, help out people in Africa, um, and they find it helpful. So I keep on doing it, and I so sort of way I, I I sort of pay back for all the help that I've had throughout my career in coaching and mentoring. So yeah, or more specifically, pay it forward. Yeah, yeah, Folks exactly. That you have that. Um, I want to start uh, by just talking about uh, you and creativity, because when you say the word creativity, I know from our days working together that you always carried around a sketchbook. You were okay. always drawing and pen and ink drawings, I think was your, your yeah, yeah. choice. Um, tell me about how that impacted your tech career. So uh, as I said, I was educated as an architect. And when I went to architecture school, what was really emphasized was the hand skills, the skills of drawing and and, and rendering and getting an idea from your head to paper so that you first learn how to draw the real world, the, the, the world that you see, so you can draw the world that you can think of. So uh, it's really important to be able to say, well, I can see that and I can draw that. So it was a skill that we learned, it was at University of Arizona, to learn as an architect, you learn how to draw. It's so core to, to, to the skills that you learn. Just like as a writer, you have to learn how to write. So this was the skill that was totally important when I went to architecture school. It's a it's, uh, more digital skills are, are are being valued now because of how the world has changed. But for me, it's a skill that I, I took up and I you know ever since I've been I've been filling sketchbooks. So if you look behind me, that the, the third row there, that's filled in my sketchbooks over the past 30 years. And there, I, I've, I've gravitated towards these these leather bound journals I get from uh, Iona Handcrafted Books in Austin, Texas. And I basically I fill them with with my with ideas and everything out there they can be. 
drawings. This was I went to a class on Turkish map folding. Oh my goodness! And so I I I, I took an idea there. So anything that goes flat, I'm oh. willing to put into this journal. So they are they're they're uh, uh, you know, paintings from a from a trip to uh, I forget where that was, but uh, this was um, a Pearl Harbor. Uh, you know, trip to Pearl Harbor. I bring this with, so I'll bring this with me wherever I go as a way of sort of chronicling my journey. And what I found is that I know, David, you do a lot of bicycling, right? I do. And so that's exercise, that's exercising your body. And for me, that drawing, that journaling is exercising my creativity mm -hmm. so that when I'm doing paintbrush or, or, or pen creativity, I sort of call it, uh, that sort of understanding, you know, I draw a cool drawing of the way I choose the colors to use, the way that I, I, I do the perspective, what I put in it, that is a real creative intent. I do that so that when I'm doing non paintbrush creativity, when I'm doing not, you know, when I do my work as a program manager, I can solve problems creatively. I'm exercising my creativity by doing that so that I can use my creativity in other ways for work, for example. So creativity to you is a muscle, a muscle very much, success. very much. You're, uh, you're just in better shape. Uh, yeah. So that, you know, when 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 I'm presented with a challenge at work, um, I look at it with a design perspective. I look at it with a creative perspective that my creativity is much more in tune because I'm practicing it more often. And so it gives me the skills that I need to do my job effectively, to see to see the metaphors and that a lot of it is seeing the metaphors and applying a metaphor in another realm to solving this because uh, to solving the problem in front of us because the reality is that very few problems are absolutely new many of them are trying to figure out how to how to solve it in the way by wrapping something else that might be unrelated to solve it in the way here makes sense although they're usually new to me yeah. they're not new to the universe yeah yeah exactly Tell me a little about uh, the the um, the mentoring you're doing and how you apply that to people that you've just met. Yeah, so a lot of it is in the approach that I that I've looked at, and I look at at, at technology at, at a job in technology. For you and I, Dave, we work in a technology company. We work for Microsoft, and your career at a company like Microsoft, uh, and this this pertains to many companies, is that I look at it three axes. One of them is the technology that you're working with. That could be anything from blockchain, it could be anything from machine learning AI, it could be from uh, you know, creative tools. It really is the, the technology that you're using. Another axis is the type of work you're doing. It could be coding, could be UI design, could be program management, it could be uh, testing, uh, it could be all this, so the type of work you're doing. And then you have the third is the domain. And the domain could be anything from financial services, to public sector, to what I work in, in media and communications. So you have these three axes that, and there, there's probably even, even more, you know, that the, kind of the people you're working with. So you have all these different axes and you can choose which axes you, you follow. And so you can say, I like, doing for me i like working with with creative companies and media and communications i like doing program management i'm good at program management and um i like using the, the technology of of, uh, uh, of user experience technology I like building front-end experiences so you know these are the 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 sweet spot that i built on this multi-dimensional access for me and what i tell people is that building a career is a series of jobs where you take where you are finding the things that you're good at and the things that you like to do and over a series of jobs getting these things closer together mm -hmm. so that at one point at the at a certain point you're doing you're you're doing the kind of work that you love to do in a domain that excites you um and you're 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 doing work that you're good at and it takes time to figure out what you're good at what yes. you like to do and what the domains are and that's what you do over the course of your jobs Many people who I talk to at early in their career, they get frustrated because they think they have to have uh, success is having all these things right now in their job. And it doesn't mean that, you know, well, to get to the job I really want, I need to develop the skills here at this job so I can be good, good enough to get the job there. So it is really, you know, looking at what is your career, but it's a succession of jobs where you're getting what you're good at and what you like to do closer and closer together. Okay. 
Um, are you uh, encouraging people to do something like you're doing to uh, actually apply your your creativity to sketching, for example, or music, or um, whatever, whatever the creativity is? It's it's for, for those side of the tech. Yeah, for those people who who, who gravitate towards to. Uh, to, who reach out to me? Yeah, it's it's the people who reach out to me are many of them are trying to find what um, how to make their job how to add more creativity to a tech job. That's really a common thing. And what's interesting is that I was talking to a woman the other the other day who who reached out to me who wanted to help on this. And there, the, the the thing that she asked was, I'd like to add more creativity to my job. Can you give me an idea of what I can do? Well, that's the first act of creativity. You need to figure this out because it is not come naturally. You have to figure out what in your, whether it is you know, solving a problem that your manager has put in front of the, the team, whether it is taking, uh, taking the technology that you're working with and applying it in a creative way, but the recipe isn't there. But what is there is your ability to to present yourself as a creative person because you're doing creative things. So you know me as a creative person because you've seen me doing creative things. Yes. So there is the examples of, you know, what you show in the background of your of your team's meeting, what you show about what you do is that, you know, so many times people ask me about that 3D printer in the background there. It's there because I actually build stuff with it. I get ideas and I build stuff with it and then I'll show them. So it's it's part of me. It is not something that is a uh, that is a, a spineless book on, on, on a wardrobe. These are things that actually mean something to me that is 100% uh, authentically me. So there are things you can do, like an example that I give people is if you do the visual arts, use the visual arts in your presentations. Don't use stock photos. Don't nice. use a clip art. Use your own imagery in your presentations. And, you know, this is, you know, simple things like that to show that you can do this because many people keep it hidden. They keep it, they keep their creativity in the closet because they're afraid of, of putting themselves out there. So it really is a, yeah, you know, it's, uh, I see that you share that your bike rides all the time. And I think that's great. What it, what it does is that other people who may not know that you were bike riding, they say, Oh, let's go on a ride together. Nobody knows that if you keep that hidden. So the first thing I say is, you know, wear it on your sleeves, wear your creativity in a way that is authentically you that, you, that and, and, and practice it. Yeah, I, um, I, so the, the bike riding and sharing that information, that scratches a few itches for me. You know, one is uh, it gets me out in some fresh air and exercise, but also I'm, I still feel like I'm new to Chicago. I'm still exploring and I'm discovering the history of it and the architecture of it. And, some of the the natural areas around here, so I'm also uh, uh, capturing a lot of that. And I've been in photography for a long time, and I I do what exactly what you said. I often my public presentations include photographs that I've taken yeah. that are re relevant to that. I know people like my friend David Neal, who's a very good artist, and he puts his cartoons, his hand drawn cartoons, in his presentation just like that. Uh, but you mentioned that it's. A lot of people don't want to do that. The reason they don't want to do that is there's risk. Yeah, you may put out things that you've created, and now uh, you're open to people critiquing those or criticizing oh, those. Totally. What do you and say? That's, it's like that, that's like, to that's part that. of growth. That that's totally part of growth, and that's how you get better at what you do. Is you put yourself out there, um, and the you know it, it is it is a part of that creative process that you get that feedback. If you're not getting that feedback, it's just a little art project on the side. You know, an example, um, I was in Chicago earlier, actually, um, at end of the year uh, in, during the pandemic. Uh, actually, I was virtually in Chicago. Um, uh, one of the art, you know, one, one of the things that I love to do is find ways of combining things that people hadn't thought of before. Okay. So an example is that I travel has me journaling. When I when I stop traveling, my creativity hit a brick wall because I I'm not inspired by uh, drawing anything in my little home office and my uh, my hometown I've been in for the town I live in I've been in for a long time so th there's nothing new and novel in there so what I found is that last year Microsoft released um, a new flight simulator version with a with a great imagery and what I did flew is, over Chicago. 
I flew to Chicago. I flew to Sydney to Sydney Harbor. I flew to uh, New York City. So the image that I have here on my on my screen right here, I actually can't see it, but it's hard um, to see. Is that I I took my journal. Uh, basically, I flew to a location, the flight simulator. Uh, I then paused it, and then I I drew. Um, I did a painting, or I did a drawing There's right there. And so this 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 is <laughs> New York. It's not Chicago. Thing. It looks a little bit, but. But, but this was, you can set the time of day, and yeah. this was a uh, a way that I could sort of combine technology and creativity in a way that is totally 100% me. I basically did a drawing. You know, typically you can't stop the you know, pause the plane in midair and do a sketch Not right in front of a skyscraper in New York City. Um, but this gave me a really interesting opportunity. I flew to the pyramids of Giza. I flew to I flew to the Sydney Opera House. I flew to these places and I did drawings and it was fun. I flew through San Francisco um, right by the Transamerica uh, Pyramid. So these are things that I do to have fun uh, that I sort of put together things that had not been put together. So I call this virtual flight sketching. Uh, oh, that was a creative solution to jumpstart your creativity. Yeah, yeah, and it, it was fun. Yeah. Um, and your uh, people that are interested in your career coaching, yeah, where should they go? The uh, techcreativecoaching.com. Okay, and I'm right there, right? Uh, always I scroll down, I see there's a uh, a form to fill out. Yeah, just they fill out the form, a phone number, an email, and uh, a time of day. Although yep. uh, I'll give you some feedback here. You just I heard you say earlier that you're coaching people and. Uh, all over the world, but the time just says morning and afternoon. It's not clear whether it's your morning or their yeah, morning. Yeah, I, I got I got to fix that. So yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a time. Yeah. Other than that, it's actually a very nice looking site. Yeah, thanks. You know, it's a simple WordPress site. You know, it was you know put it up in a, in a couple days, and you know I put in here. So I, what I found is I put in a handful of re, uh, references like a reading list, um, videos that, that I that I that have helped me. And uh, you know, people who've who uh, you know who I'd helped, I put a little uh, some client testimonials, and you know, it's just uh, it's just authentically me. It's just something that I've I've done on 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 uh, um, on virtually uh, all the cost was a, a domain name, and uh, well, was, of course, but it was it was it's something that that I like to do. I'm I'm people tell me I'm good at it, um, so I continue to do it, and it doesn't take out too much time out of my day or out of my week, so. And are, are you uh, monetizing the service? Are you charging for it? No, nope, I'm not. Okay, good deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? Um, hmm, good question. Um, what are you doing? Are you doing anything creatively? Uh, I am also on the media and communications team, the, the Midwest version of it. Yeah. And uh, I've been playing around with... Uh, the SDK of Azure Media Services and yep. learning how to manipulate videos through that. I'm doing that. And then outside of tech, I, I do a lot of photography. I do a lot of, um, oh, uh, I do some drawing, mostly uh, caricatures of people. Um, and uh, and then I'm just appreciating other people's creativity. I see I, I'm a big fan of live music. And so now that the venues are reopening this weekend, I'm embarrassed to how many tickets i bought for upcoming concerts <laughs> over the next few months oh um actually there, there is something new so um a uh I, I did this little freelance project so there is a um an afrofuturism uh artist named hebrew brantley h-e-b-r-u yeah yes yeah, the sky boy yeah so um i think he's in california now but he's from chicago yes exactly so um, I did a little freelance project of creating a virtual um, art gallery for hit for his artwork for a um, an auction house who was doing a, wanted to do a show in um, Hong Kong. So I did a virtual art gallery for uh, for him. In uh, I used a tool called Babylon JS to make it, to be able to have it um, show on the web. I'll sort of share with you. I'll share I'll share a link after the after the call. But basically, it's it's a 3D experience of walking through his sculpture and artwork um, oh. in a, in a uh, let me sort of share with you. I, I his, his his murals are all over the city. Yeah, it's called Solus S S O L U S. So I'll share a link with that with you. And I created this virtual experience 
of of a gallery uh, that um, is it is if you uh, if you go to the site that I just posted in, it's a uh, I built this using Babylon JS. It took me a, it took me a couple of weeks, and it's something I did did in my in my uh, in my free time, sort of outside of work. But it was using a uh, helped me learn some uh, technology to do this. So, but uh, it's uh, reminded me of Chicago with you. So. It is, uh, it took a second to load, and here we go. And then I can move my mouse around in this virtual right. world. Yeah, you know, or I can click on any of the images, and it takes you them, so. Very cool. Well, we'll definitely share this in the show notes. So, you know, it's, it's uh, it, it sort of goes along with what I like to do, is sort of combine creativity and technology. And so basically it was given a model of this of this space, and I added the interactivity to it. So you can, the navigation, the clicking on artwork, and 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 make it feel like a like a a real experience. I hope that they send you to Hong Kong to actually experience <laughs> the real thing. That just seems only fair. Uh, I actually really like uh, Bradley. I've been seeing this part of my was I'm writing around. I can see more and more of his artwork, and this I think he calls him Flyboy, uh, the the little kid with the goggles. Yeah, yeah. So you look you look up and you see this huge uh, this huge sculpture that you know you put in, uh, put underneath the the design. And uh, you know, you're immersed in in his imagery. So you know, the idea of I, I'm very I'm fascinated with the idea of creating a virtual space for displaying artwork because I've I've created artwork over the past thirty years and I'm finding ways to sort of explore sharing that work. Excellent. I know what I'm going to be doing for the next next twenty minutes is playing mm -hmm. with sites. <laughs> uh, so that means we have to end our conversation. So I can get to that. Yeah. So thank you so much for your time. This has really been fun. My pleasure. When my friends reach out to me about a technology, I like to find a creative use of it. I like to find a way to put my creativity to apply that technology. So the things that I have in mind are, well, how do I be creative with blockchain? How do I be creative with AI and machine learning? How do I be creative with code? So that's how I look at uh, technology in a creative lens.